Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint at home yourself this adorable squirrel in acrylic. Now on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. You will be hearing him through at least some of this broadcast, <laughs> unless he's got to go pick up the kids um, during this, and he's going to make sure that the cameras are pointing at what I'm teaching and talking about. You're going to have full access to my palette. I'm going to show you every brush, every technique, every every brush stroke, color mix, everything that you need to know to be able to create this for yourself at home. This is a beginner focused lesson and so I am going to demo in sketching it as well as I provide a traceable that you can use from the website. Um, so whatever getting the image on the canvas feels more comfortable to you, well I'll be putting it in paint so you can see it better. You can use uh, any of the transfer methods for line drawings that are out there. And if you don't know what any of those are, I have a cool video about it that's not very long that shows you how to get images onto canvases, canvases that are uh, just blank and gessoed versus canvases that are already painted. It's a really good video to have in your toolbox. Are you ready to jump in and go over the materials, John? So sure. today's surface is... Hold on, let me get you a little smaller. He's going to make me small so you can see my palette. Now I'm going to be mini for the rest of the lesson. Okay, so this is an 8x8 eight eight surface. I have the colors Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, uh, Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Titanium White, and you really only need a titch and it's super optional with a little blue. It's just nice for the reflections and a couple little turquoise pops in the fur. But if you don't have that color, don't worry about it. It won't mess with you at all. I'm going to be starting out today with the number four Isabe Isacryl Filbert. And that's just so I can loosely sketch it in. And we're going to talk about object placement and size. So this will be good for you if you don't have a traceable and you don't have a way of doing the transfer method. This will help you get the image on exactly as we have it. So we'll all be the same, same, same. Doesn't that sound fun? Same, same, same. Let's put up a step, sir. So the class is going to be broken up into steps. Those steps are time stamped. That um, time stamp will uh, make little chapters later so you, when you're following along it'll be easier to find your place. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to measure at about the four and a half inch mark. Right, so that's like right here. And I'm going to help us use this. So four and a half inches in, you've got a center line. Right, now from the top down, right, just about five and a quarter is where the nose starts. Five and a quarter. I'm going to bring a little sketch out on either side that way to sort of say, eh, I got a nose here. It's just general sketchy sketchy. You don't have to be too stressed about it. Come down about a quarter of an inch and make a little curve. And a little bit under there for his eyes. Now coming down from the top. The eyes are at the ha at the pupil four inches down. So if you were to come here and make that mark at the four inch mark, that would help you know where that pupil is. I'm gonna just do the lightest little sketch line here, just so you can see its placement, right? From the nose out, let's do this here. It's one inch on either side. So from our center line, it's one inch out is where we place our eyes. Curve a line out, bring a line back in. Now we're going to come over here, another inch out. Curve that around. Then you just loose sketching. I'm doing it in paint so you can see it. Now from the corner of my eye, I'm going to come up. Make a loop for the ear, another loop for the ear, same here, this corner of that eye. So if you've ever had to match your little eyebrows up, you're sort of familiar with this idea. I'm going to come up and let myself know that there is definitely a little muzzle that I will be sketching and painting in here. And I can be loose and sketchy about that. Above my ears, I can make some loose fur marks that I will be exaggerating later. And then, I'll come here. We still have a stream, right? It just made a bloop noise, so do we still have a stream? I do believe so. Okay. I'm gonna come down here and add my little Hello. cheek lines coming around. Hello, cheek lines everyone. come We're still out. Here. Hmm? They're, they're still here. Okay. We're gonna just pull that down. This is just very loose sketching. 
This is why a lot of times uh, people are like, is tracing cheating? And it's like, well, it's great to know how to draw the squirrel. I enjoy my process of drawing very much. But also you have to paint over everything. So really you're always blocking stuff in and then redrawing it in. So you're secretly learning some drawing along the way. It's a little trick that I have. I'm gonna make a little center. You can see it's off that center line there. This will also help you put, if you're using traceable, put the traceable in in the same spot. And we'll say that the little tail comes off that way. Matchy matchy those. All right, that is all we need on that part of the SketchUp. I'm gonna put my filbert to the side. Take a sip of coffee and refresh my screen because refresh guess what? It. Did you lose it did it? that thing again where it loses the the chat. So whenever you lose the chat, like I'm on my phone and sometimes I lose the chat too to my own channel. I think that's very funny. Um, and I'll have to go back and reset my live chat so I can see everybody back to all messages. Oh my goodness, I see Shay and Lynn and Grace and moderator Quentin Acredone and Heather C has just become a channel member uh for um 23 months happy anniversary and thank you for for the the super chat there heather it is very appreciated and there's a question hmm. um does it matter if you paint flat or angled does it is there a so you will see the image better and its proportions better on an angle when i paint paint flat it's real easy for me to throw my perspective off because it's hard to get the distance and visual because it's at an angle to you. So it creates kind of a forced perspective in your eye line. So when your image is just slightly at an angle, like my uh, drafting table is, I have a drafting table on top of a table to hold my paintings and I just put tape underneath it to hold it there. If you if you're just like, it's not, it's not a magic table. It's like, it's taped down. I just use, painter's tape and I and I and I wrap it like twice to go there and I just put them on the corners if you'll do me the overhead I'll replace that babe because I can't replace okay there we go yeah that so then when it sticks that way I can paint it pretty rough and it doesn't slide up and down on me and also so I can still have my angles that's how I do that now I'm going to use a hog bristle brush this happens to be number 18 Raphael Artini um it's made with boar bristles from a pig you could just use a rough round brush or a big Simply Simmons round if you uh, didn't want to use that. It's just an option. It is not the only option. I'm going to get that brush wet. And I'm going to do my background in first. Now that I've sort of sketched everything in and it's mostly dry, I'm going to come here and grab a little bit of my white and my blue. And then I add a little burnt sienna to gray it out. It gives me kind of a nice little blue gray that I can play with. I can always get black in there if I want to, but it's just nice to have some variance. Now I'm on the toe of the brush and I'm going to brush back into my sketch in a very streaky, loose, expressive manner. A background. I want to go into the fur. I won't lose being able to see it. I can still faintly see it under my paint. And that's going to let me paint my fur back up over my background and have not openings or holes in my, in my paint. I'm going to make some darker gray here. And I'm going to just loosely brush that through, just making sure this is Painterly is the word we're looking for. Notice it's just on the toe and I'm just flicking that in, right? Both paints are wet. And I can always come back through with a couple dynamic colors and things. So even though this is a simple gray background, it'll be actually kind of a fun one to paint because you'll get a lot of technique into it. Notice my brush strokes are short and I'm kind of weaving them together and you can see them on the surface and that does create some energy 
to our subject matter. I might kind of rotate it around there and you can see I'm brushing back into my fur. And there's a bit of a blue gray feeling about this. And come back in with some just blue. Come down. And get a little blue brown mix again. Using a chromatic gray or a chromatic black, and that is a black without any black paint. I even have a color mixing video on it. Actually, I've done several on that. Is a great way to create hue and value in unexpected ways. Hue is the color something is, and value is how light or dark something is. I'm adding more white and I'm just brushing this in. And you can see that that gets very dramatic very fast. Just brushing it in loosely. You could do this with a regular round brush and still get a good effect. You wouldn't lose your effects. Don't feel like, oh, if I don't have that exact brush, I can't get that effect. That's not true. You can get a really close approximation with a lot of different brushes. Um, which is why I always tell you what I'm using, but unless it's super specific to a technique, I don't really push what I'm using. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my black and my altering blue, and that makes kind of a Payne's gray. So there's still some blue in this. And I'm going to take some of this darker gray. And we're going to increase the hue and value down here. Nice short brush strokes. I might weave some of this up into the main painting. So quite a lot of energy and dynamic range for this. Let's come down into the tail. If I need to add a little more water, I will. So those two grays will even play against each other in a fun and dynamic way. Oops, that was not my bucket. <laughs> that was funny. Just painted my table and squished in my brush. I'm going to put out some more white paint. We're still on the same step. We're not changing steps. This is just a for. weavy step. It's all what studios are for. We're just kind of weaving paint right now. It's just loose and fun and expressive. And you know what? Let's get a little I white. I missed a step at the beginning of this. Did you? I, f I forgot to put up step two at the beginning of you painting the gray background. Well, boy, they get a big step then. Sketch in background. Well, so I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna put the step two up here that we'll remember to put at the beginning of that, just so that everybody you know, and then uh, we'll put it at the beginning of the section where it belongs. Usually, uh, the people who yeah. help me timestamp do a pretty good job of correcting yeah. for our mistakes. So sometimes our timestamps will be better than our own step steps. Yeah, and then we'll uh, but we'll go ahead and at the next step we'll get back on step three correctly. Okay. Because that was my mistake, and I, I think that's better. We you know what, man? There's a lot of buttons back there. You know, we there can't all are. have the power of gray skull. I, I have not realized how many buttons there are. There are a few, a couple buttons. And then come back into my dark gray. Do some little kind of light energetic strokes here. Just weave those in. Oh, I really like that. Okay. So that's just nice and lovely and all woven in together. Now I want to dry all of this before I yeah. go on to the next step. And I will do that while John talks to you guys for a second. And then we'll start painting in Mr. Squirrel Pants. Yes. It is. You guys get <laughs> just catching up on the chat as you guys are going. Oh, yeah. If you guys haven't joined us in chat, please do. The chat is where our community gets together. They get to hang out. Um. Hello, Bree. Hello, Grace. Hello, Tammy. Everybody out there. Hello, Lori. Nice to see everybody. Um, man. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> Cinnamon does, uh, does make some good throwback references. But thoroughly dry your canvas. That's going to allow for the, the uh, between the layers to happen. So that when you, you don't drag paint and don't make it... Uh, you know, muddled as you move forward. I certainly do make it muddled as I move That's forward. That's why you dry it. That is a problem that I have. Step three. Step three will be for you and me. All right. 
So I'm going to use a number eight D, br D brush. And I think in this one, I'm going to also have a number four. So I'm going to be using D brushes for a minute. Um, these are brushes that are a filbert and kind of a rounded brush. They're half and half. I do have them on in my art store. Um, but the thing to know is you could just have a filbert or any brush that gives you nice soft flicking motion. Like one that wouldn't make a good line for you, but makes like kind of like a little fur texture. You could use fans, grainers, all kinds of brushes for this. I'm going to start out with my number eight. And that's just because I don't want to have to work too hard to get some of the um, techniques. I'm going to take a little of my red and yellow together and make kind of a bright orange. And I'm going to mix that with my burnt sienna. I go more yellow or even you can add ochre into it. You can get some nice effects. And I'm going to come to the edge of my little tail line out here. And I'm just on the toe of this brush. And I'm going to make little flicking strokes. Maybe a little of the two of you. A little ochre, a little yellow, kind of flicking these in. Grab a little more orange. Get a little more red into the mix there and a little more burnt sienna. You can see that darkens it right up. Pulling that in, little short flicking strokes. And then I can grab a little bit of my Mars black and my burnt sienna. And I'll definitely come into the face. I will have to paint some of that back in and that is okay. I don't mind that. I know where that's going to be. And I'll blend this out here. So this is a first layer, it's sort of like an underpainting. It is just your first little expression of that. All right, there we go. Looking super good. Let's call that a step. We can do that. And I'm gonna rinse out and make a little more uh, red and yellow kind of orange here. And then I'll come back up into this mix that had my yellow ochre and a little burnt sienna and we will just start to lay in that first little furnace. Almost glazing over what I have, right? Close at the eye, a little more out at the cheek. And again, I'm just getting a first layer down. I will follow, look, I will, like when I'm coming up over the head, notice that there's a curve to my brush stroke. I will follow the curves and flow of the face so that even the streakiness of each brush stroke works for me. Notice my paint isn't thick on this brush. I'm just covering the white of the canvas. This is what we call an underpainting and it is why acrylic paintings have what is kind of considered an ugly stage where we just have rough layouts of colors involved. Now I'm going to get a little bit more yellow ochre on here. Maybe a little burnt sienna and some white. And it's going to make kind of this crazy beige. Again, we're just getting that first layer in. 
And I will just scumble in around my little muzzle. If I have to touch up anything, I can touch it around the eyes. What I'm doing is just making sure that my surface has a layer of paint. So it should just be so roughly painted in. It should look like the, the most energetic, furious little sketch ever. We're going to dry it thoroughly and we want it to be dry so that the next layers will happen. And what's going to happen through this. So if you're new and you're like, this is crazy. How is this going to work out? We're going to work out good. <laughs> really good. Actually. It's amazing. It's always in the last third of the painting. It all just sort of comes together. You remember the A-team? I love it when a plan comes together. It really comes together in this last third. So what we do is we dry it, we put in some details around the eyes that are a little crisper, and then we come back and loosely paint the fur. And it's like the painting just comes out of nowhere. It is a lot of fun. So let's dry this very thoroughly. Wrong button there. That one, yeah. Thoroughly dry it. Um, you don't need to use the heat. Just uh, make sure you get you uh, watch as the color sheen. I don't know if we can see it today. Uh, no, it's pretty, most of it's already already dry enough so you can't see any um, of, the, of the sheen difference. But sometimes it'll go from shiny to matte, and you'll notice that, that, that that'll indicate it. But uh, she wants to make sure you get it thoroughly dry so that when you add the next layer and the next layer that they don't intermingle. Because you don't want your layers mingling in acrylic. No, sometimes you do, but sometimes Some you don't. I saw a good question about the 13 days of Halloween. Um, Carol says, will there be a supply list? There should be. Um, one canvas will change. I am thinking that the crow has to be 12 by 12 for the feather details to read it all. It'd be so hard to shrink it down into a smaller canvas that I'm going to go ahead and put it back up to the 12 by 12. Um, so that that'll be like there might be a couple where the details are better on a slightly bigger like this little guy is good on an eight by eight but sometimes you feel a lot of details you have to size up so we've got 11 by 14s we've got all that we will have those total canvases listed up and then the colors i expect to use and then i expect to have some bonus painting and some of it maybe with some black light so you know we'll work that out as we go but that'll be like post extra optional once those classes are done and we'll let you guys know how that's going to go. So all of that will be listed up. It's going to be pretty fun. Mm. I'm very excited. It's going to start the 16th of this month and we're going to just three times a week do a spooky Halloween painting for 13 days. So we have 13 Halloween paintings. We used to do them all in a row like as a daily live, but we found yeah. that that was a lot of painting, especially if I put in any big Lux paintings. Like I have some really gorgeous ones this year, like the crow and the bat creature. Um, the goddess in the lake. There's just some really beautiful paintings. And then there's going to be ghosties and cute butts. And of course, you know, I think we're going to do some fan art. Now I'm going to take the color black and I'm going to come in and very carefully just kind of sketch in my eye. I'm using a number six Raphael round. This is a lot like the number uh, four Art Sherpa round or the Simply Simmons number four round. It's about the same shape. And it just holds a really good point. I like it a lot. I do the left eye first so that I can match up both eyes really well with each other. Because I have a lot more control on my right. Mm, might need a little more bow out on that. So it's always good to like kind of take a look and then do a rinse out and like do any touch ups you think you might need. Big eyes are always appreciated. I'm going to go ahead and black in the undershadow of the nose. That'll just help me a little bit later when I'm working with that. Now, one of the things that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take a little bit of my phthalo blue 
and my titanium white. And that's why I was like, you don't really need that much thalo blue. And I'm going to tap in kind of a gray reflection into the wet paint here. So it's okay that there's a little black on there because we want this to feel like a kind of grayed muted reflection of the light in the sky. And we will let that go. And we will call that whole nonsense a step. We're going to dry it. All right. Missed my button there. Today's been a crazy day. So, man, sorry. It's a... Uh... There we go. Are we having fun today? We're painting. Two step six. If the step says it's true. All right, now I'm going to size down on my D brush. You could use a round brush. If you had a small hog round, that would be perfectly acceptable. Uh, a lot of brushes will work here. I'm just going to use this little D. And I'm going to come back into my yellow and red and make a very light color. Mix it into my burnt sienna. And now I'm going to just piece out maybe a little more red on some, some little delicate little hairs here so that the tail is sort of fluffy. We want a fluffy tail, don't we? A little more orange Indeed on some do. of them. There's a layer. Maybe a little more orange as I come down. I'm going to fluff. Fluff, 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 fluff. Looking so fluffy. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt sienna and even some cad red. And I can always, you know, mix in, weave in, make sure that these layers go so I can go back and get a lighter color and then come back into my stronger color and just weave in. Short little flicking strokes. And just on the toe, and you'll notice that because when my brush gets uh, wet, it kind of reforms into shape. I know a lot of times when you're using um, hog bristle brushes, it's unnerving to see them fluff out, but they do fluff out kind of naturally. And then as you wet them, they will size back into their shape. Now I'm going to just get some black into my mix here. Just bring it right up here to this mix I've been doing. Just kind of paint some little floofy tailness. This tail is very healthy and very floofy. That's what we want is a floofity, floofity tail. Floof the tail. Little expressive brush strokes. I rinse out every once in a while. I might even grab some just black on my brush just to make sure I've got some values. Kind of worked in even in this black here. See that there? Mm -hmm. Kind of blend it in. A little red and black. And I may take some of my cad red and cad yellow mix, kind of a light orange. I like some of the fur friends. You don't have to do all of it, but you will want some energy there. Just highlighting some of that fur. All right, let's call that a step. Let us move on. All right. I do want to dry it so that the next layer, this, this part of the squirrel right. will layer over the tail. I don't want it to blend in wet into wet. I want it to dry brush over it. So. Oh, thank you, Deborah. And Celtic Peasant. Oh, thank you, guys. 
That's really nice. I really appreciate all the support. You guys have no idea. Um, just, it's uh, it's amazing to be able to do this for you guys and have you be part of our family. And uh, I, I can't wait. We actually have a lot of really good updates to share with you. Um, like we're we're definitely uh, got got a lot happening, but a lot of good stuff to share too. Yes. So we'll, we'll oh, for updates on where we general, are. Yeah. Uh, give us another step and then we're what if go. i have to take a different color for background that's okay you can it's more all you have to worry about in the background is if you change the color make sure that the light and dark of it is the same so that the squirrel still shows over it, it like that would like if you were like i want it all to be red and you needed that to show then you would have to make sure that the back was light enough so that the squirrel still showed so your values on that are the most important on what you're trying to get. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown over here and a little bit of my black as you do. I'm still using my small number 4D and I'm going to come here for a second and just flick off to the side. Come over here and just do a little bit as well, just off to the side for just around the ear. And then as I go through, I'm going to get more burnt sienna involved. Now I'm going to come over to my yellow and red. I'm going to rinse out a little bit. Wipe my brush off with a towel so it's not carrying a lot of extra water because we don't want to let those hog bristles get too much extra water. I'm going to mix out some orange and let it get into my burnt sienna again. Just make sure that I've got some color here. And we're going to just mix out some little flyaways, right? A little short. Oops, oops, oops. You got very furry on the hair there. That's fine. <laughs> I can be a little bit of burnt sienna as I come through. I just blend it on my brush. This will be nice because when we layer the forward hair, it'll give something for it to Give it some curls and curves. All right, kind of fling that up there. So we're just running these little loose strokes around the upper edge of Mr. Furness. Now you'll notice I'm not putting a lot of weight into my brush and I'm touching everything very lightly. And I'm flicking up. All right, and that is going to really help me. As I'm painting, bring down a little bit of fur down here. Let's flick up as well here. Now, I'm going to rinse out. Let's call that a step, and we'll work on the inside of the ears, okay? So now I'm going to take a little bit of my black and my blue together. I'm going to add a little bit of that on the inside of that ear, kind of flicking out on both sides. I want it to be dark. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna. Kind of 
make sure that that little bit of go over here. Now I want to grab my round brush and I'm going to grab just a little bit of my gray and my brown. Do a smooth brush stroke up for the ear. Let's do another smooth brush stroke up for the ear. And then I might grab a little more white onto my brush. And highlight that little ear. And that will help it like pop out. I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to grab a little of my brown white hair just to kind of flick in. Blendy blend. Grabbing a little black. Bringing that little black fur out. You can see just the brush stroke itself kind of creates that sense of there being fur in there. And I want to bring the shadow down a little bit below the ear. And come back to my black and brown. And I'm going to add a shadow in the fur along the head at the base of that ear. Just so that we can show that it's slightly different than the head. All right, we're going to let that dry for a second. And we're going to keep furring it up, my friends. So let's fur it up. That's Terrific. It's terrific. Let's grab some of our orange that we had from up here and we're going to come here and I can even grab a little yellow ochre. I'm just lightening the fur right here. Grab a little burnt sienna. Blend a little fur back in. And get a little of my cad red and cad yellow and I haven't rinsed my brush out. I'm going to come down to my cad red Mars black burnt sienna. Just make sure that I have a little bit of shading around my little nose here. And blend it up in there. Now I know I'm going to be coming back with highlights and things, but you know, we're layering in colors, we're building up. It's okay if you come over your black a little bit because we're going to re blacken the eye just at the edge so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to add a little white into this mix here. And sort of flick out some very fluffy cheeks. I don't really think you can over fluff those cheeks. I think nothing's cuter than a well fed squirrel. Mm. Though it's interesting, when I posted the squirrel, for most, mostly we have a lot of squirrel love, but there are a lot of people who do not have squirrel love. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it is the bane of my garden. I think I probably have a, a little bit more of a Beatrix Potter kind of like relationship to the animals in my paintings. I've added a little white up to my little orange mix up here. Yeah. I think that's uh, just like, that's a me thing. Where I'm just like very, very into... I think I need to add some dark brown gray there. Making sure that my nose is 
Good. I'm going to take a little black brown. It's okay if I get a little white involved. I'm going to come under here. Add a little kind of burnt sienna black as I go. Add a little white. A little white. I can even get some yellow ochre into it. Really parchment and out. I'm going to rinse out and go again a little black, a little brown. Take a little white over here to the yellow ochre. <clears throat> Can you show us a size zero D brush? I don't know what it's like. What's the smallest D brush you have? I might have a zero. Uh, this is the zero. This is the four. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre on this. Make light little flicks going around. Kind of come around here through underneath. And then we're going to finish out with some burnt sienna orange around the sides. Mmm. And I'm going to come here and flick out a little bit more fur. We can be brightening it with colors in a second, but we just want to get that sense of it's there. And add some of that brighter color into here. Now, I'm really going to want to dry all of this. Just all of it. Just get it all dry. Dry! All right. So, I hope that helped there. Stephanie, you want to make sure you can see the, uh, uh, the brush. Oh, so a size 16 D brush is going to be huge. Let's take a look. I think, I don't know if she's got a 16. I don't know how big that is to compare, but I think that will be a bigger one. Um, oh, hey, Karen. Nice to see you there. Nice to see everybody here. Let me ask if... Uh, do you have... Let me ask you a different question. Do you have a size 16 D brush? Yeah, I'm a 20. Okay. So they wanted to know... So uh, someone ordered a size 16 and was worried they ordered one that was too big. That's a big brush. Uh, but it's not like it's not like it's a four inch. But I mean, cutter. here's an eight and here's a twenty. So there, you know, there's some size there. You'll have it'll be nice to do bigger work in. Yeah. I don't know if I have a sixteen. What's a sixteen? Oh, I think I had this big boy. Yeah, I think I have this big boy as the next one up for my eight. Is my big, 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 big one. I might have somewhere right, in the works. studio one, you know? I think that works. Okay. All right, you ready for the next step? I think I'd already asked for it, yeah. There it is. Okay.
So now I'm going to come back in on my eyes and just make sure that the area that's black is very deep in black. Enrich it if it needs it. I don't paint out my dark gray reflection. Right, it's got a very strong blue cast to it. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my white and my phthalo blue together. And I'm going to just tap up and down a little bit of this there at the edge. When we put the final little bit of white white on there, it'll make it look like like blue blue sky is reflecting. I'm going to rent like dry out my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my brown into my orange. And I'm going to just make sure that this is a nice kind of a highlight on the ear. Just so we can really see those little ears. Now let's get into a round brush. This is the number four Raphael art to me and I just want a kind of more roundness for more control. I mix a little yellow into my orange. Really kind of piece out some directional kind of hair. Get a little bit of my burnt sienna over into my cad red with a little yellow in it. Make sure that this is just real rusted. I'm going to play with the fluff through here. A little more cad red, cad yellow. Definitely add some fur up into that ear so that there's some nice layering. I'll get some just burnt sienna here. I'm going to blend these two areas sort of together. Get a little burnt sienna in here. Go right back into my yellow. Just brushing this down. Now as I come closer to the nose, I definitely, definitely want to start putting my little burnt sienna shading there so that we have a nice little kind of dish nose. I like a little dish nose. Let's get a little bit of our burnt sand in our black. We're adding a little bit of shadow here, aren't we? And come right into my yellow and add a little red into it. A little bit of our orange in there. Just adding a little bit of orange. And get a little burnt sienna. A little upward flicks, kind of creating a little shading. A little bit right here. Now where I kind of messed up my eye there, I just go back with my black.
Sometimes when I'm brushing fur, I'll lose something and it's just, I'll just come put it back and I don't mind that. Now I'm going to come in and add a little bit of my white to this mix. into the yellow ochre. And let's add a little highlight to the front here. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. I have uh, apple juice here. Yeah. So, can't do any of that right now. But thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's, it's when it's blood sugar, it's got to be the grapes. It can't be the meat and cheese. I can't handle it. No, no, I'm okay. I'll get it after. I'm good. I've got my apple juice to get through. So I'm going to come here and just bring this around. And you can see I'm just sort of shading and furring around the face. Now, we did a lot there, so let's call that a step. And when we come back, we'll add a little pop. A little later into the ears for a little more drama, but I want to come around and kind of get my little cheeks worked out. So I'm going to take a little of my cad red and cad yellow. Make a nice orange. Very lightly come around and flick out around these little cheeks. A little more brown just on the toe. You can make little wild hairs coming out. Oh, that's awesome. Celtic, that's awesome. Celtic, Celtic peasant says being an archer of a patron is the best. I say Thank it's you. the best to have you guys here. With you guys us. are the you guys are the best patrons by far. I'm going to come here and I'm going to bring a little bit of my orange back in here. And again, just looking up, making little details, right? Making him fluffy. You're never going to be sorry that he's fluffy. I'm going to get into my white a little bit. And it gives me a, more of a little cream color. I haven't rinsed my brush. Pull a little of my yellow ochre in there. Maybe a little bit more of my white. I can always get a little of my black and brown. And I just want to make sure that at least at my nose, I've got that nice little, kind of little short shade, like shading there. Yep, yeah, fine. Now let's bring around a little bit over here. So I'm going to come back in over here. A little bit of my orange. A little bit of my orange. And I can come over into my yellow ochre and white mix. Mm 
Blending, 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 blending. Gently blending around that nose. A little more white up here into my ochre and gosh I've had burn sand over here a little more black it's like become quite a little money mix but now I'm like letting it create kind of a mother color which means like a lot of the colors that are in my painting elsewhere are all in one area I'm coming here and add a little bit of Very highlight there. Get a little of the orange onto my brush, which is still got paint on it, and bring this around here. A little more. Dry brush a little fur around. That's fun. All right, let's call that a step. We did a lot there. Now, I'm going to grab a little of this. I'm going to take some of my orange, my yellow over to my orange, and there's a bit of white on my brush. I'm going to begin to work what is going on at my nose. As I come down, I'm going to get a little of my burnt sand on here. right up to my black and I'm going to bring that back and then around see I'm just taking it around and letting that little brush stroke flick out going around it's flicking out flick it out and get a little white on there just a little flick get a little white yeah so much flicking Kind of blending in. Down into that red a bit. Maybe a little black and brown. Little dusting on here, kind of like a little bit of a shading. Maybe again a little bit of here, just a little bit of a shading. Come here and I'm going to just dust a little bit out, just a little bit of a shading. Go right back into my white. Get a little more in my yellow. into my white so when I go back into my white with a brush I'm not rinsing out that you know makes the brush a little like tinted those colors then become muted and they have a relationship to each other and that's something you can do even early in your painting is sometimes what you don't know as a new painter is when you don't wash your brush versus when you do wash your brush right now I'm going to switch to my round for just a second. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna and my black. And I'm going to paint a bit of the nose here. I'm going to bring a little bit of that there. So I've done a little brush stroke here and a little bit of a chin there. And I can come in and sort of like add a little highlight. And a little highlight to the inside. Oh, that's... Thank you, J.A. Now let's add a little highlight to the top of the nose. Oh my goodness, Julie, yeah. thank you! Thank you, Julie. 
I'm just making little kind of fur brush strokes there. And again, some here underneath. They're just a little more focused than the hog bristle is. The hog bristle is more like a diffusion. Let's just add a little bit back there. See, we're just shading it. Shade a little bit there. Just bring that back a little bit. Might come get just a little bit of white. And let's get a little bit of white on the brush. Let's call this a new step. And put a little white over into my yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Mars black mix. I'm going to come here up over the eye at first with sort of an almost smooth brush stroke, but I'll let it flick off and then I will go ahead and add a little fur effects and very thin line here to the back of the eye. I'm going to flick some little, little fur. Isn't it fun how it kind of outlines it and defines it and creates it? I don't, like, love that a lot. Come up over. Might have gotten a little bit wild there. It'll happen. Sometimes they'll be bushier up there. Thin line down here. Come up, maybe like a little more white. And then I'm going to take some just white, white. And add a little reflection to the center of that eye. All right, let's call that a step. Now we got some face and eye and stuff in. Getting a little bit more. Oh, let me. I got to clean up his eye here a little bit. Sometimes I'll see stuff as I'm going. I'm just making sure the line on his eye is like just a little cleaner. Yeah, you know. Just cleaning that up, make sure that looks neat. Sometimes I just like it to be neater and tidier than it is. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna in my phthalo blue. I'm going to get kind of this blue green. And I'm going to add some of that inside this little ear here. Wipe it out, grab some white. And that was the phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And I will add some little inner ear here. And grab a little of my brown and black, like you do. Just make sure that the inside of the ear looks nice and dark. Kiss. This is just, I'm barely touching that. I'm going to grab a little bit of my white and brown. And I'm going to start weaving that on in there. Just weavy, 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 guys. 
And I'm going to add a little more white and yellow ochre. So that's the burnt sienna white and yellow ochre. Add some of this little highlighted color to a couple places around here. Maybe not quite that highlighted. I might add some orange into that. So I am going to highlight it up here, but I'm going to just grab some of that into my lower. lower chest area and then I'll look back into the burnt sienna yellow ochre white I can even pull some up here sometimes I like to kind of mix around a color especially in fur it's a part of camouflage, making irregular patterns. Get some of my little orange yellow up here. I'm gonna blend my little nose a little bit more than I had it. I'll come grab some of this white there. Even I get fussy with my stuff sometimes. We all do it. Bring a little bit down there into the chest. Notice that we're just moving colors around. I'm going to rinse out. And let's put some fun here. So let's take some cad red and some cad yellow. Pretty orange. And let's add some of that pretty, pretty orange into the fur here. I'm going to add some of it up in through the fur a few places. See what I'm doing? I do. Just a couple places. We're just, this is one of the things about doing um, fur is like the dancing around your, cre your creation. Finding those little spots where I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to this. Maybe a little more cad red. Kind of put some of that to that outside edge. Maybe a little up there. A little here and there. Fun. What you start to get is a very fluffy little creature. He's very fluffy. And he's very believable as a floofer. Grab a little of my brown and black and kind of blend in over here. It's a little darker on one shoulder. That doesn't mean I don't add some shadow into this. Just going right into my black with my orange and brown. Sometimes I like to dance that all around. Look at the cutie patootie! A little of this right here. Kind of blending in his little... Little color some places, you know. We can welcome Shonda to Emoji Club. Welcome, Shonda. I so appreciate this. Thank you for joining our Emoji Club. 
All right, little more touches up, you know, just little flicks and things. Looking for value, looking for like, what do we need to have light and dark? Get a little more white into our chest fur mix. Now I'm going to take my detail brush and get a little black paint. I'm going to dry him and then we're going to add a little splatter for snow. Thank you guys for joining Emoji Club, being part of uh, you know what we do. It makes it makes everything here possible, and it it really is appreciated. You know, being able to uh, do what we do is a, is an honor and a privilege of our, of ours, and it's something we love to love to be able to continue to do. And you guys make that possible. So, thank you, thank you very much. Um, something we really really appreciate. There's a couple other things I want to do first. Next step. Uh, yeah, definitely give me next step. I'm going to put out my fluid acrylic paint and I'm going to use a number one monogram liner. I mix a little blue into my gray. I'm going to have a nice little kind of lid. the bottom a little lighter than that you got to like it's got to definitively show as kind of like a gray little lid and go ahead and get a little white on my brush make it a little off white I just want to make sure that that's a nice clean line on my eye and then I'm going to come here and let's add a little inner light reflection in that inner corner and then a little bit along there just to have a little more pop. Never hurts to have a little more pop. Now I'm going to want to splatter my paint, but I don't want my eyes to be too, I don't want my, the reflections of my eyes to be messed up. So what I tend to do is like kind of block them with like a crumpled up irregular towel. And you can do a whack method or a splatter method for your splatter. I'm looking for my splatter brush, which I did have, but I don't seem to have now. So I'm going to have to do the whack method. I think I will do it on a, let's try it on a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit wet and kind of put my white paint on it. So this is the whack method. And you can see it gives you a nice splatter. It does. Gives you a um, good effect. With some big, big drops and little drops. If that is a nerve wracking technique, I have a whole video on how to splatter paint because I know it's a nerve wracking technique. 
And so there's a whole video on like how to splatter, oh, he's so cute, on how to splatter paint. I can't, I love this. I love this. This is super good. Let's sign him. So she, she wants to make sure she dries the little splatter so we don't, you know, drag them through the paint. Because you, you, you don't want them to smear or anything. So that's a, it's important to just to thoroughly dry it before you, you do your final signature. And that, uh, man, I'm really glad you guys all came and joined us. This is a super cool swirl. Super fun to do this one. This is very, very fun to see you guys chat while we were doing it. Yeah, this was just a, you know, sometimes it's nice to have, we've got some big, big three hoot days coming. Mm -hmm. um, 13 days of Halloween is going to be a mix of one, two, like, we're going to call them three hoots, but we're going to say these are like deep dive classes. Like, we're going to really get into them. So we've got a few where it's like, these are the spooky paintings of your dreams. Um, the the gothic Victorian crow will match the bunny that we did, the Renaissance fairy tale bunny. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he's going to be nice, and there will be continuing um, animals in that series. So if you like that fairy tale fantasy dress series, and if you know my artwork from, like, forever ago, you'll be like, oh, I know where that kind of came from. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just bring in some... That's like stuff I would do on little ATCs to sell on eBay back in the day. Um, and so that's just like one of those good things that's going to be coming back and you're going to be seeing more and more of. Yeah. Um, I've, so we will have one who's, we will have probably fan art of Jack Skellington. Disney protect us. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Elfman protect us. <laughs> But it'll be fan art, so that remember, fan art is always for your personal enjoyment and not to make money on or any of that, but just to express your fandom for something in your personal private life. Um, and so that's and we're using that for educational purposes. Um, but there, like, there's going to be just a lot of fun stuff. Could you please do a black cat who's been locked out in the rain and he's staring through a window looking pretty please? <laughs> Bree. Did you see Bree's question? Uh, no, I missed that one. Which oh, one is that? interesting. So Honey says, the whiskers. Oh, yeah. That was your that was your Honey. All right. I will do that. Honey you guys are right. Me. I just totally bizzed out my whiskers. So okay. there's so, a lot of ways to do whiskers. So one we're going to call this a new whiskers, step is a um posca pen so i'm going to kind of prime a posca pen up and i'm going to turn this into the the turn it into the side so do i ever get tired of watching you paint no i'm sure no i do not this is an una posca three millimeter pen That's the safest way I can think of to do whiskers. You can also do them in black um, as black well. Line. So whatever is your preference, you can totally go for that. Like the okay. black one is here. and I think I have a black one primed. I don't know if I have it. It might be a one millimeter. That is, those are always sketchy. Yeah. If you want to do some black, you can as well. little mix up have fun with that una pasca <laughs> I mean, you can try to do it with the brush but honestly ah <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is it's just ah yeah i'm very excited about the 13 days so coming up we've got a couple more fall you've got the pumpkin still life we've got the adorable dog holding a fall leaf and then boom we're going to be ghosting and haunted and black hats and cute bat creatures and Jack Skellington and just everything from one hoot uh, cute to like, woo, that's gonna be like a lot to do. So we're gonna have like a full range. Um, it was, I realized last year we just raised the bar on Halloween so much that I was like, was fun. I'm gonna have to raise the bar again this year on Halloween. Don't and so I did. <laughs> so it'll be, wonderful now i know some of our, our our community does not paint halloween and so for you guys that don't that'll be from the um 
16th of this month to the 14th of next month and then boom back into autumn mm -hmm. so that's why i hit a bunch of autumn so for my community that does not do the spooky paint along they've got lots and lots and lots to do while we are doing the other stuff and oh and there's even a thistle in the middle of it for people who are like oh that's enough spooky like but it, the thistle's to me the scariest flower because mm. it's all <laughs> and i thought that was like good for a uh you know kind of yeah sp spookier it'll go with all the halloween stuff so i'm excited about that you can see um some of the paintings that are scheduled up on the calendar already mm -hmm. and they'll continue to go out and i'll have them up pretty quick so we'll have a materials list for the whole 13 days yeah which i think is going to be really really cool and um, anything you saw me using in today's show you can buy uh on our website we have an art store and i saw my paint and color so if you're having trouble finding color you're having trouble finding something i probably have it on my art store got a lot of d brushes a lot of the brushes that i use um and we got good prices on our art supplies and, and we, now we have ten dollars shipping that's right the shipping, shipping is fixed so, so $10 yeah dollar flat rate shipping yeah. Um, so if you've been wanting to get the 1264 multimedia pad, it's a good time to do it. <laughs> it is a good time to do it. Right. So and, that is and, definitely you know, there. I would say if you like the a D brush, is so cute today. A pad, like in some titanium white, <laughs> it's like your basic starter needs. Yeah, I think I think you would be like set up there. Is that somebody said that? <laughs> no, I was just thinking like. If I, yeah, I, I think it's going to be really really good. And so these paintings are going to just keep coming like this. They're going to continue to be good. They're going to continue to be like the free awesome art education. Uh, we'll definitely have a bunch of like grape art and then we'll have winter art. And then, you know, then we're in 2024, which needs to just be chill. <laughs> right. That's the intention all the way down the year. It's like just a chill 2024. And we will do an update video real, real, real soon on, um, where we are and everything that's going on that will be live so that will be a good good one um do even to canada uh, guys i wish this is not me having an issue with any country this yeah, no, is i guess our countries in shipping having issues with each other i don't know we just we are, don't have a way to do it we're bound to the carrier that our warehouse uh elects for us so we can only do shipping in areas that we're allowed to do shipping and that's but, it, it is expanding but that is it the is whole point of us right bigger. like trying to get to ireland was like also being expanded so we'll have yes. updates on that with some good news and some sad news but mostly some good news and and, the, and but you know it'll definitely be an update it was a journey it was like a lord of the rings how long is this walk kind of journey wasn't it was, it it was definitely like, a full three movies of walking yeah I, th I thought i had signed up for dude where's my car and i ended up in the loter like trilogy <laughs> of like how are we getting to mordor again <laughs> kind of a long long where are the entwives kind of journey mm -hmm. That all makes sense if you are a Lord of the Rings fan and probably doesn't make a lot of sense. But we'll make it sensible when we make the video. So I hope you guys are going to love your squirrel. Um, if you've done the fox, he will probably match the fox with the little tail over his nose and the bear floating in water. Like I have a lot of little animals. And if you paint it with me for a while, you'll recognize some of my little animals sort of all go together. Yeah. Like animals with flower crowns all go together or cute little animal portraits all go together. They all kind of have like the eyes and the whole thing so when you put them all together you're like oh this is kind of weirdly a collection like the dog will yeah. go with the other dog paintings i try to do, think of that like how you guys' walls are doing and that you have nice um you know uh matchy match things so you can change them out seasonally mm. is a weird thing i think about in y'all's lives so that's the thing that's going on i'm monologuing like a villain but i'm the good guy I'm monologuing like a good guy. I am here. All right. So <laughs> I'm in a hero academia marathon with the kids. <laughs> There's a lot of episodes. It's like bleach. <laughs> it may never end. Yep. <laughs> Wish me luck. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll watch them all with you. That'll be good. Let's do that together. And now I'm like, oh, there's a thousand episodes of this. Okay, here we go. I'm here. All right. So. You guys, I want you to be good to yourselves and good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel really, really soon. In fact, probably Saturday. Okay. And don't forget to watch today's short. Bye-bye.